Hello. So, we are back with kind of part two um, of the uh, tier list we're doing for the UBL. First of all, we did the... We looked at the Miners League or the Miners Division. This time we're looking at the Majors League slash Majors Division, whatever you want to call it. And uh, rank them um, based on how person Like, based on how personally how strong I think they are and how scary they look to, to go up against. So, that's what this is mainly based off of. Um, again, this is mostly for fun and for constructive criticism. Criticism. I've realised I can't talk in these videos. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is mostly constructive criticism and just looking at where I think these teams are overall. Uh, without further ado, though, um, let us get into the teams. So I'm going to be... Last time I did it... Um, alphabetically um, forward. This time I'm going to do it the opposite because I'm at the end because I'm first alphabetically in the majors division. So we're going to do it backwards, which means we're starting off with the Sydney Scissors, coached by Airstream, also the you know owner of the league. Um, so their team consists of Kyoga, Mega Morwal, Garchomp, Whimsicott, Gudra, Braviary, Rapiria, Snova, Alola Marowak, Dusclops. Cabalion and Tokatik. So let's get the elf let's let, let's 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 get the two elephants out of the room. First of all, before the draft even started, Airstream asked me, "Hey, so what if a Pokémon's not actually listed on the tier list? Like, what are we gonna do about that?" So, uh, like, I said, "Well, if it's not on the tier list because I forgot about it, then we can make an, a proper adjustment. If a Pokémon's not on the tier list because I would consider it too weak." Then it would just be considered a tier five. It's like so hypothetically, if I wanted Snova, <laughs> don't ask questions. I'm like, I'm just not gonna. <laughs> I don't think it's worth it. <laughs> so, yeah, especially because I think a Bomber Snow is actually a tier five. They've gone with Snova. I don't understand. But I'm just gonna trust that they know what they're doing, and we'll leave it at that. Uh, the other elephant in the room is obviously Kyogre. Kyogre was kind of a monster for me last season, so I think, like, that should kind of, you know, go for something. Um, they've actually got, like, r like so Airstream's problem last time was they had a good speed mode, and then they just went into tr pure Trick Room. And this time they've gone, yeah, sure, I've got my Trick Room mode, I've got Duskwops, I've got Alolan Marowak, I've got Rhyperia, arguably Gudra as well. But uh, I'm Mega Morwell, that's another... Like, Dusk Dusk Alola, Marowak, like, Mega Morwell and Rhyperia, all in Trick Room, sounds terrifying. But also they've got a really good fast mode, because they've got Whimsicott and Braviary, they can both tail Tailwind. As well, things like Garchomp and Kyogre, <laughs> and even Cabalion. Um, and you have beat up Whimsicott for the Cabalion, so, like, the team's very versatile and very, very solid. Um, yeah, it looks really, really good. Um, I think, I guess, the main thing would be, like, if it gets speed control, it's it's super, super threatening. I would say maybe, like, and it's got Togetic as well. Like, it's, it's like, all of the pieces feel right. I still don't know what Snowfit does, mind you. Um, I can take my guesses, but I'm not going to spoil those. <laughs> um, but yeah, the team has a lot of good offensive output, as well as a good amount of, like, versatility and what it wants to do. So, yeah. Uh, the team is very good. Um, kind of like how I did with the, uh, the the Miners division as well. I'm going to kind of put, like... I'm going to save S for, I think, the strongest team. So, at least for now, the Sydney Sizzles are going in A. But they are very high. They, they, they could be S. Um, but we'll look at the rest of the draft and kind of... Let, rest, look at the rest of the teams and maybe C. Um... Next up, we actually have a, uh, a new coach. Um, um, this is uh, the Sailor's Expedition, and uh, coached by High Seas. Um, so their team um, consists of. I, why will it not let me get out the tab? Thank you. Uh, their team consists of Xerneas, Mega Altaria, Tapu Lele, Clefairy, Clefable. Uh, Alola Ninetales, Granbull, Marwal, Tapu Fini, Azumarill, Shinotic, and Dedene. Um, so if it isn't obvious, uh, they actually have a Mono Fairy Draft. 
And Mono Fairies, like, uh, fairies are really good typing. Let's be perfectly clear. Fairies are very good typing. Um, but it is, um, like, when you want to do monotype, if you want to do monotype and have fun, the uh, perfect, perfectly reasonable. And, like, that, or I'd say steel, or maybe even water, would be one of the best types to do it with. Like, you've got Xerneas and Tapifinity, which both power up fairy type moves. Um, you have great redirection, you can participate in weather, you've got double intimidate with Gramble and Marwell. Um, you've got a, a Trick Room, like, quote-unquote, like, diversion with Shinotic. Like, there's really good pieces here, but it's Mono Fairy. So, you bring a good Steel or Poison type here, and it can really just run through the team. Um, I would say Tapu Lele honestly hurts this team more than it helps it, because, like, you're turning off Tapu Fini's Misty Terrain, which you want. So, because that helps the rest of your team. So, like, it's got good Pokemon, and, like, in theory, the pieces could work together, but they're all Fairy types. So, if people have good steals or poisons, it doesn't matter, like, what your team's really going to do, unfortunately. So, like, if you want to have fun with it, go for it. Like, by all means, I'm not, I'm not taking shots like that, but if you want to have fun, go Mono Fairy, by, by all means. But unfortunately, it just means your draft is going to be a little bit on the weak side, so I'm going to put that in the C tier. Next up, we have uh, another new coach. Um, so, this is going to be... I, I want to make sure I get these team names right, so I'm, like, trying to open Discord in the background so I can actually make sure I get all the team names right. Um, that's the wrong bit. I am really bad at this. As you can tell, I'm extremely professional. Um, so, this is uh, the Richmond Hill Regis, which I actually really like that name. Like, just low-key. Um, coached by Gil Bates. Um... So, their team, now I have to open a different tab, consists of Zekrom, Mega Tyranitar, Tapu Bulu, Heatran, Excadrill, Hydreigon, Miastic Male, Lapras, Bishop, Ho-Oh, Starmie, and Ilamise. Um, I'm going to be quite frank, I don't know what Ilamise does. Um, I think it gets Helping Hand. <laughs> and that's like it. <laughs> but if you're gonna use it, if you're gonna just have tier five helping guy, it's not the worst thing on the planet. Like if you can make the tier five support work, then by all means. And like Lapras is pretty decent for a tier five too. Like a pretty good bulky water. Um, let's also talk about the main thing here: Mega Titar Excadrill. Very like, very good combination. You you have a nice sand mode here. Um, you also have Bishop. Plus a lot of really good physical attackers like the T-Tar, the Act, the Extra Drill, as well as Zekrom and ho -Oh, All of which, like, don't really like Intimidate because ho -Oh usually likes to go on the physical offense because of Sacred Fire. Um, and Zekrom as well, like, with Bolt Strike. So having Bishop as a deterrent for Intimidate, because, like, it's cool, you can Intimidate, but then you're also powering your Bishop. Um, I guess one of the weaknesses of the team is it doesn't really have a way to gain speed control. Um... You have, like, Imprisoned Trick Room Meow Stick, but, like, you don't really have Tailwind, um, or Trick Room, like, a way to play in Trick Room yourself. Like, you have slower Mons and you have faster Mons, but you don't have a way to keep, like, use that speed to your advantage. Um, but I think the pieces are, like, are, like, a really good, like, baseline. You have great supportive pieces, like, Meow Stick Mail is actually really good, like, as, as a Tier 4, it's actually pretty good. Um... But it feels like maybe there's not the right supportive pieces. And I feel like if this team has proper speed control, it could be very scary. Obviously, you have T-Tar Excadrill. Um, but that's about it. So, I think I'm going to put this one in the B tier. Um, it's threatening in its own right, but I don't think it has the, quite the right speed control to make use of the pieces that it does have. Um, it has definitely some really good pieces, though. So, look out for this one. Um, some right transactions can really save this team. Um, next up, we have the Mexican Mimikyu, coached by Fat Rat. Uh, our returning uh, runner-up from last season. Um, their team consists of Solgaleo, Mega Gengar, again, uh, Zygode 100%, Togekiss, Zergtree, Darmanitan, Rebombi, Archeops, Porygon Z, Budswalt, Smeagol, and Floatzel. As I feel like I'm going to say it with a lot of tier 5s, I don't really know what Floatzel does. 
I know it gets Swift Swim, and that's like it. That's all I know. It's a fast water type that gets Swift Swim, and that's it. Um, but I at least know Archeops kind of is is a speedy boy. Unless it gets Tailwind. I'm not sure if it gets Tailwind. Either way, um, you have Tochikus for Tailwind. Um, you also have Speed Spot for a Bombi, which is really cool. Um, passing that over to like Zerkatry could be really fun. Um, the team definitely feels like it doesn't play well in Trick Room, unfortunately. Um, it has Trick Room setters in Solgaleo and PZ. Um, but it feels like the team doesn't quite have the right support pieces. Um, don't get me wrong, Mega Gengar is terrifying. It it was it was tied kill leader last season with Kyogre. So I think that's a testament. And the team can get speed control with, with Tailwind Togekiss. Um which is legal because it gets it as a tutor move. It just doesn't get helping hand like in Gen 8. Um and you have, like, great offense. Like, Zerkatry Dom is, like, such a powerhouse. And again, you've got Mega Gengar and Solgaleo. So, like, there's power. And I think a lot of this team as well is going to come down to... A lot of us aren't quite sure how good Zygarde 100% is. Because you have to get it to 100%. But what you do is very, very tanky. Um, so, we'll have to see how good Zygarde 100% is as well. I think that's going to come down to it. But I also think the team kind of falls a little bit to Trick Room. Last time, Fat Rat had was able to get away with it because they had a Moongus. And that was like the Trick Room deterrent. Uh, this time they don't really have that. So I feel like if they had a Trick Room deterrent or like some way to say no to Trick Room, a little bit easier other than like Imprison Gengar or maybe Imprison PZ. I don't know if PZ gets in prison. Um, yeah. Like I'm going to be more critical on these teams more so than the minor league teams because it's the minor leagues. A lot of people are starting out new. So I can understand, like, people may not have the most experience. With the major leagues, it's a little bit different. These these are going to be the teams that are going to be the scary ones. And these are going to be the coaches who know how to pilot these teams. So, unfortunately for our runner-up from last season, the Mexican Mimic Qs are going to go in the B tier. Because I don't think they fight well enough in Trick Room. Next up, we have the uh, London Luxray is coached by James Zian, uh Our final new coach for the major division. Um... And their team consists of uh, Evil Toll, Mega Salamence, Cartana, Nihilego, Greninja, Confei, Vanillux, Luxray, their mascot actually, uh, Nidoqueen, just realized that, uh, Behem, yeah, Nidoqueen, Behem, Bocephalon, and Lucario. First of all, I'd like to say, I'm not a fan of you because you uh, you sniped my Nidoqueen from me. I, I just wanted one Pokemon from last season. Is, is that too much to ask? Um, <laughs> not really. I'm, I'm, I'm only messing. Um, so, their team has three very, very viable Tailwind users. Evil Toll, Mega Salamence, and Cartana. All incredible for sending Tailwind. You also have a lot of fast Pokemon. Like, you know, as I say, Mega Salamence. Uh, Neo Hilega is very fast. Greninja is very fast. Um... But again, this is another team that has a couple of Trick Room setters as well, like Behem and uh, Confei. And I think Behem can at least, like, try to fight in Trick Room. Um, but it's certainly not the best thing at fighting in Trick Room, for sure. Um, again, this is another team that really wants its speed. And if it can't get its speed, it kind of will falter. Um, but the power's there. I think the, the, like, the pieces are here for a really good team. Things like... Greninja is a great tier 3. Confi can be as a really great supportive piece. There's also the Vanillux, which doesn't really have, like, it's just, is a weather deterrent right now. Uh, kind of like uh, the Sailor Expedition's Alola Ninetales. Like, the Vanillux is just kind of there. Um, if there was more support for it, I would maybe like this team a bit more, as well as more support to fight in Trick Room. Um, but overall, like, the I think there's really solid pieces. Maybe some, uh, like, uh, Yevel Toll, or Evil Toll, can really work with a Greninja as well, just to get, like, really powerful dark moves. So there's definitely, like, plays here. Um, and I can definitely see his team doing well. It's got Intimidate, it's got, and, like, Cartana's super scary. There's a lot that can work with this team. I think a couple changes, and this team could be really, really good. For now, I'm gonna put this team in the B tier. Um, this team... really has some great... So it has good support and good offense. I'm not sure which 
way I'm not sure each one is right for the team. Um, but like a swap either way. Um may I think mainly support. Like if there was like basically like either have a better way to deter Trick Room or a better way to fight in Trick Room, I'll set it yourself to make sure you have that option. And this team becomes a lot lot better. Um Next up, we have um, the Grafton Grambles, coached by Kana. Um, so their team consists of Necrozma Duskmane, uh, Mega Bennett, Incineroar, Porygon 2, Vikavolt, Mudsdale, Durant, Zatu, Crobat, Venusaur, Torkoal, and Yamega. I'm going to outline the obvious right off the bat. Venusaur Torkoal is incredible. <laughs> um, it's a great core in, in VGC 2020. Um, and has proved its dominance there. Even without, like, G-Max Venusaur. Like, it was very, very good. Um, because you have great option with fast mode and a great option with slow, slow mode. It's kind of like Titar Excadrill. But Torkoal's base 20 speed instead of, like... Titar 61. So it's a, like one of the slowest Pokemon that can fight in Trick Room. And you give it Eruption and it will tear teams to shreds. Alongside that, you actually have great Trick Room. This is one of the best teams that can fight in Trick Room in the league, if not the best. And if any team wants to fight in Trick Room most, it's probably this one. Because it's got Borion 2, Vikavolt, Mudsdale, um, and, uh, and Torkoal. As well as having Necrozma Dustmane, which is also a great way to set up Trick Room. As well as Incineroar to get the to help support get the Trick Room up. But it's not like the team can't fight without Trick Room as well. It's got Durant, it's got Crobat, which is an incredible tailwind and speed su and uh and support in general. This is my personal opinion. I just really like Crobat. I think it's a really good Pokemon. Um There's also Mega Bennett, which I think is kind of a sleeper pick. I kind of was like, uh But then I thought about it, it's like Mega Bennett has a lot of options with that Prankster and a super high attack stat. Like, it can work in either Trick Room or Tailwind. And if it can use that attack stat to tear through teams, it can really put on a show. Um, I'm not sure what Zatu is doing there. And for of all Pokemon they brought back for, from their last draft, they brought back Yamega. Which I still don't know what Yamega is doing other than going for Hypnosis and trying to be quirky. <laughs> um, I'm also only saying things like this because I actually you know, like feel like I at least can joke about this with Kana, just, <laughs> I've at least known Kana long enough <laughs> that I can make these uh, calls, but like, it's, yeah, I, I knew them last season, and they were a very good player last season, so like, yeah, I, I think they can make this team work, I'm gonna put this team in the A tier, like, it's a such a, especially like, when you look at like, a lot of the other teams where like, they can't really fight in Trick Room, this one can, um, next up, we have the Flower Mound Finions, coached by Lyric. Um, our runner-up from last season. Uh, not runner-up, our third place winner for play- well, third, They got third, they got third, okay? I can't talk, okay? Leave me alone! <laughs> um, so their team is Lunala, Mega Lucario, Landra Spirian, Primarina, Tangrove, Weavile, Escavalier, Rampados, Rayquaza, no Mega. Alolan Persian, Rotom Heat, and Kamala. Now, I'm not quite sure what Kamala does. I'm I'm just going to assume you know what you're doing with Kamala Lyric. But, um, it's there. But as for the other, like, low tier in Rampardos, I know what that does. It has, like, 160-something attack. And, like, 58 speed. So it, it can work in Trick Room. It can potentially work in Tailwind, but it's really nice in Trick Room. It will tear things apart, as well as the Scavalier, also working in Trick Room. And you have... As well as, like, Rampars and Primarina can both work in Trick Room and Tailwind. As well as, like, you have, you know, Landorus Virion being Landorus Virion in VGC. Like, if you don't know, Landorus Virion, very common in 2018 and 2015. And it's very, very good um, at what it does. As well as Rayquaza. And Lunala. <laughs> Lunala is the king. Or should I say, I, I, would, I would argue the Queen. Of setting any kind of speed control from Trick Room to Tailwind. 
You got it. Lunala does both and provides an incredible offense while doing so. I would have considered my Lunala my MVP last season. And Lyric now has it alongside Mega Lucario and Landris Varian and Rayquaza. This team has an incredible offense as well as the speed control to get to where it needs to be. I would say it prefers fighting fast. But with things like Escavalier and Rampados, it can fight slow. It can apps and Primarina to an extent. And Tangrowth. You have Redirection. You have two fake out users. I would say Weavile and Alolan Persian maybe do a little bit of a similar job because they're fast dark types that can fake out and usually prefer playing support. But Weavile is a lot more offensive. Um, so they they can do a little bit of different things. I would say that's what one of my only criticisms was this entire team. <laughs> and maybe the Trick Room mode isn't completely fleshed out. Um... But other than that, like, the team's very, very good and uh, is an easy A. Easy, easy A. Uh, and then that leaves myself. Um, so, obviously I'm going to try and not be completely biased when ranking myself. Um, I've kind of talked extensively about my own team. But if you don't know, my team is Dialga, Mary Kangaskhan, Tapu Koko, Arcanine, Serena, Jellicent, Muk Alola Form. Tangela, Lugia, Conkelda, Noivern, and Nidoking. So, I'm going to try and look at this kind of how I've been looking at the other drafts. So, like, trying not to be, you know, biased. So, there's only a Trick Room mode here. You've got Jellison or even Dialga to set up Trick Room alongside Conkelda and Muk. So, and you've got support with, like, you know, you've got, you've got Mega Kangaskhan to help support it like, getting the Trick Room up. So, like, there's definitely a Trick Room mode here. It feels more like a Trick Room deterrent. But it can definitely play in Trick Room if it wants to. Um, also, you have, like, Tangler for Rage Powder as well, which actually Tangler is a pretty good Tier 5. Um, Serena, like, is interesting. I'm not sure why it's really there. Um, almost feels like Nido King's kind of the same deal. There's a lot of speed... Con like, there's... A like, you have, like... Lugia's also an interesting one. I think, like, Lugia's going to be interesting to see how it does. Um, Dialga's an absolute powerhouse. Uh, Coco's really versatile. Arcanine can be versatile. A lot of the team comes from its versatility, personally. Um, and what it wants to do. Um, but it doesn't look super threatening. I don't look at this team and I go, I'm super threatened by it. Um, unless you're certainly, unless you're weak to certain Pokemon. But other than that, like, it definitely has synergy, but it doesn't look super scary. Um, so I'm going to put it, as people aren't going to like this, but I'm going to put myself in B. Um, I don't think the team looks super scary. I think it has some weaker points. Um, the strong points, I think, are there, but I think the team looks a little on the weaker side. Um... Actually, you know what? I'm going to move myself up, and I'm going to move myself up for one reason and one reason alone. I'm going to move myself up to A, but that's only because I'm going to, instead of picking my favorite, I'm going to put Sil uh, I'm going to put the Sydney Sizzles and the Flower Man Fi Finneons, but more so the Flower Man Finneons, in the S tier. Um, I think both of their teams are very, very strong. Um... Because, like, I was thinking this entire time, like, do, I don't know which one I would say is the strongest out of the two. I'd say they're both equally as strong. I would say Flower Mount Finneons has a slight edge. Just because, like, I feel like their power is ridiculous. And can really get to their power when they need to. Um, it's like, they're, they're two sides of, a, of the same coin. Whereas, the Flower Mount Finneons are more, like, powerful and threatening in... Um, in like in fast mode, but have a very a very solid trick room mode as well. I would say the city sizzles are kind of the the opposite side of that coin, where I think their like their their trick room mode is really the threatening part, but also you can't sleep on the fast mode either with Kyogre and Garchomp. So it's like they're both very very good. Um, I'd, I'd say incredibly good. But yeah. Um. 
But I think that will do it uh, for for this video. So thank you very much for watching. Um, and I will see you guys in the next video. So take it easy, everyone.